I look like that. Hey, hey, family, what's going on? We're back. Episode do wait dos episode dos. Too much caffeine, man. <laughs> I was like, what? All right, episode two. Dos. 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 Yeah, man. Episode two. Come back again. We're back. Uh, trying to be smart with time. More conservative. Um, yeah, man. Uh, we're behind on a lot of stuff. We, we got to do a lot of catching up. On a lot of things. Yeah. So many things. I'm pretty sure people. There's a lot of topics out there. I've been asking us our opinion on stuff, and we haven't given it. We had enough, more than enough time to kind of sit back and watch a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of people's topic. I mean, yep. their, their perspective on different things. Um, one thing um, that everybody talked about. You wasted your Kelly. Okay. Right, Kelly. Kelly. Well, Kelly's one person. I, I don't want to make him not about him, but just. The people around him and stuff like that, right? So it's not like Arkelly, Arkelly, Arkelly. He's one person because there's a lot of Arkelly's out here, and I'm still in our community now. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I just hope that people will still be as outspoken after this, not just because it's him and, and, and he's a celebrity, but anybody, the, the local dude on the street. Right. You know, so, um, so I kind of want to touch on that because I, it hits close to home for me, okay. having any experience with that, and you have your opinion on it because you didn't, you didn't, I didn't really watch, tune that watch it, but, so let's have that before I watched it, so let's have that conversation about it from your perspective, because you haven't watched it, so you're not as, you're not biased in any type of way, right, yeah. you're coming from a clean perspective, from what you've seen and heard, from people and what you've read, what are your thoughts? Oh man, it's a, it's one of those things where he's such a polarizing person, right? I mean, obviously, we grew up on his music. Uh, we grew up as fans. I mean, yeah. sure. I mean, we are, we we loved the music back then, and you know, when you have somebody th that polarizing and, and and such a star to you, you always see things from that perspective, kind of first. I think it's yeah. just a natural thing. Obviously, the stuff that he's he's been. Um, said to do or you know, people are like or now blaming him as being this 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 different person that I didn't know. It's always like a shock. It's like some of the thing where it's like the shock is so big it puts you in the place of like that can't be real. Like you know, that, that, that couldn't have happened, right? Like you have that like initial thought. But then when the claims keep coming out and then all these different things keep coming out about it, obviously like a person like me who actually takes time to hear stories and and hear and hear all the stuff that comes out, and not just jump to one conclusion. I mean, the stuff that he's been pretty much said to have done is just despicable. Like it's the it's the craziest thing ever, man, to see somebody in his position take advantage of his power and use his power to to hurt so many people and hurt so many young women in, in, in the way that he's been, you know, said to have done. So for me, it hurts to know that somebody like that could do that and put people in that position. But also, it's one of the things where I, I'm waiting for everything to come out because that's what I do. So I'm a little like apprehensive to go all in on him because I don't know the whole story. And you, you watch it, you know more about the whole story than I do. But for me, having somebody that's really, like you've been a fan of your whole life be blamed for some despicable things like that, it's just tough for me. Yeah, I, I'll be honest, like, I, even, for me, I don't necessarily need to, to, I've always been kind of, any, one thing we know, like, when things come out in the industry, when things come up, there's usually some truth about yeah. it. There's some rumblings about it, because people just ain't, they aren't just making it up, you know? Um, especially when it comes, you know, the bigger the star, the bigger the star, right? People are going to talk, they're going to look at every little thing that you do. Yeah. Something happened, something been going on, and I know, I've known people, not known people, but some of my friends have talked to people who were in Chicago, and it's like, yeah, he's been doing this for years. That was always a known thing, mm -hmm. him sitting outside school and stuff like that. The, 
it's the the amount of pain that he's that he's caused, right? Is it's immeasurable. Like we, we don't know. Like the, it's the thing that these women are going to have to deal with for years. And when I watch the documentary, those women hurt. That's a real thing. I could see it in their eyes when some of the women couldn't walk into certain rooms, and certain spaces. They were having those features. They were having traumatic experiences. You can't fake that. You can't, right? You, you just, I can see it. I'm just like, and I hurt because, and I talked to a couple of women, like, it's hard for me to watch it. And I said, if these women could get, a, get on the front of national television and talk about their experience, and granted, it was hard. I can take time to, to, to listen to them. Right? So because that's the thing, like, somebody failed these kids. Somebody wasn't listening. Somebody didn't speak up. And we were talking about earlier is that from, from childhood, we are taught to not get in other people's business. Yeah. We're taught to keep things in house. And to a certain degree, I, 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 I understand. I agree. But this is how R. Kelly's and whoever, it's not just him, but this is how people. This is how these things happen, right? Because we don't say anything. We stay to ourselves. We stay out of people. We stay out of other people's business, right? This, that's why the people who speak out against things and wrong or injustices, they're scrutinized by everybody because it's so different. We're all programmed to a certain extent. Anybody that's different from us, that doesn't, that doesn't agree with our way of thinking or mindset, and we attack that person. I'm more honestly. I was more disgusted. Something happened to him. Yeah, right. That's a real thing. There, there's a mental illness. The psychology, the, the psychology part. That's a side. That doesn't excuse what he's done, right? Yeah. But I think I was more disgusted by people's response to him. I was more disgusted by the people around him that allowed this. In order for this to happen for three decades, yeah. you had to have that help. But the people around him obviously are people that are. I, I say this. I say this word for lack of a better term, for the lack of a better term. But they they were leeches. They were people that needed him to progress in life. Like a lot of yeah, a lot of that stuff is. I mean, if you have successful people in your circle that don't need that or don't need you for the advancement of them or the advancement of their career or their lifestyle, then I'm sure they would have spoke up more. They would have been more more apt to, to speak up in those situations. But the circle he had around him were people from the inner cities of Chicago that needed him and used him as a vessel to, to to even survive in that world. So, I mean, obviously those people are going to be more prone to not speak up to that stuff. So, yeah, you know? so, but I, 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 I'm going to oppose that in, in, in a sense, right? Because we, we may not agree here. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell me for three decades this man has worked with the who's who in the industry. Well, no, I'm not saying people that. Yeah, that's what that, I'm saying. So, the people, I'm, yeah. I'm saying people who didn't need him, that's why they didn't speak up. But what about the people who were? But they didn't want to, probably didn't want to believe it. Or didn't actually see it physically. Which is, that, that would be my rebuttal to that. Well, so, yeah. well, that was the thing. It was, and from what I understood, I know that he he had beds in the middle of the studio. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and if right. one person said, yo, this isn't cool, and there was an interview with, years ago, DMX said something about why he wouldn't, he wouldn't be in another room and they would record he was in another room, DMX spoke out with it. It was a known thing, and I feel like this is why a lot of people are quiet. That's why certain people are pulling music. That's why a lot of people are quiet because, like I said, like the level of complicity between had to be between so many people. And I'm not saying like, hey, it's your fault why something happened. Yeah. But if you knew, if you had an inkling, mm -hmm. and you didn't go say something to this person for fear of how it may hurt your career, you're just as guilty as him. Mm -hmm. Now, will we know? I don't know. But what, what, what is loud is that nobody's seeing anything. You mean to tell me for three decades nobody saw anything? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Right now, when you when, when you watch the documentary, right? It does sound crazy. How could somebody actually allow this to happen? How could the uncle of Aaliyah allow this to happen? Right? That sounds crazy to me. So if somebody was like, oh, no, that didn't happen. My uncle was there. I can be like, all right, but that just goes to show you, it's just like, 
the thing I say about that is we don't know if anybody said anything or not. As far as celebrities go, or people who are who have stature, like those people could have said something behind closed doors or or, or say something privately to authorities. Like we don't know. And just the fact that they, they didn't respond or say anything openly to documentaries or to the press doesn't mean they didn't say anything either. I mean, there's stuff that I mean, I definitely got over. Like if there was tapes of him with, with people. And he still is in the jail. So is that on the celebrities for not saying anything? Or, you know I mean? Like, there are so many different parties that could be at fault here. And I, I don't want to just say it's people that could have had, had the ability to say it. But, but, but even, I, I don't want to take it, I don't want to take it away from that, right? What he's done. And just because, like, you weren't taken to court, it doesn't mean that something, something happened. Something, something happened. And when I watch that documentary, when I see people still laughing and smiling as if this shit is funny, yeah. that was a, that bothered me. That, that was a problem for me. And I'm like, you still think this shit is funny? To listen to his brothers, to his brothers, go on record and be like, yo, our killer is A, B, C, and D. It's family. This is people who are supposedly close to our lives. And like, yo, this shit is weird. Something is up. You know, so it's. People could have, if, if they did say something, wasn't loud enough. Right. Because now, when you have daughters, everybody's saying, well, if you have daughters, you have kids. I'm pretty sure they probably look back like shit. Damn, maybe I should have said something. Maybe this was what it was. I thought it, I don't know. And it's not just for them, them, but if you saw something, even now, if you saw something and this man is still doing the same thing and, and, and demonstrating the same behavior, you still don't say nothing? Yeah. Now that's an issue. Right? So it's, and it was interesting listening to them and dad talking about like, yo, he messed her up. And I had to, she didn't want to talk about it. I had to respect her. And this is somebody who was married or engaged to somebody who dealt with him at, at such a, a young age. And I don't really want to, it's easy, like, I, I want to keep it to him and okay. the people around him. Like, that's, when you start bringing the celebrity stuff into it, like, yeah, the only thing I would say about that is that a lot of people are quiet. And the reason why I think a lot of people are quiet, label is quiet, is because the level of complicity that people knew to a certain extent. Whether you knew all the way, you, if you're in the industry for that long, you kind of know how things work and go. And, and, and when I start hearing all the different stories of, of this is child, when he wanted to work with them, you know, his father came out and was like, well, he only asked to work with them after 12 a.m. That's weird to me, these are little girls. Why are you only requesting to work at certain hours of night? That's really weird. There's a level of behavior that people, all I need to see is once, twice, three times the most, we're like, yo, and everybody wanted to work with him. And, and then somebody said, well, can you separate art from the artist? Can you separate art from the artist? artist? And I read something, and it was like, can you separate the trauma from the victim? <laughs> no. No, you can't do that. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's like asking to separate the art from the artist. It's like asking to separate the trauma from the victim. No, because if you listen to every one of his songs, Every, every every one of his songs actually says what he's doing and what he's thinking. Remember I talked about this, I said for psychopaths and people that do do things consistently to a bad to a bad nature, they need an outlet to to admit their, their wrongdoings and, and, and admit the stuff and that they're doing. And you can say narcissism, and, there's a wrong that too. And, and that too, like they won't catch it, they won't catch it. But yeah. you go into that thing and you have a, a platform that he has to actually say in the song like in the songs he's saying, my mind's telling me no. <laughs> but my body, my body is telling me oh, <clears throat> that. He's saying that, right? So like you can see that. So once you like like you said, remove yourself from the, the artistry of what he's doing and see what he's actually saying. I mean the writing the, the writing's on the wall with some of the stuff that he's saying. You know? I think the, the music is the extension of the artist. Because all he's doing is he's expressing his his environment. But I was I was well, I was reading something, it was like when you when when you if you if you need content, what's the best place to pull content from? Yourself. You have a limited amount of things that you can pull from that you can use. Right. Right. Your, your experiences, your, your, experiences yeah. your life, whatever. It's how you put that out there is on you. That's all that he was doing. Right? I haven't listened to R. Kelly in a very, very long time. It's, 
like I said, like it's it's always been out there. It's always it's always been out there. Man. Was the documentary disturbing? Absolutely. But then it's more so then it becomes a person. Why is it disturbing to you? Whoever watches it, right? Why is it, when it disturb, what is it about me within myself that made it disturbing? Right? I have to ask, I have to ask that question. Is it is it because I know that this could happen? And I choose to avoid it. Do I feel guilty because not me, but because you still listen to his music? Do, do, do we deal with people who still listen to I can't put, I can't listen to his music. Yeah. Not knowing what behind it. Just like just like we can look at a Justice Smollett like say something ain't right, we can look at that and say, yo, something ain't right. Yeah. But yeah, that's the issue. It's all it's 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 not in it's not even him anymore. It's how we as society, as a people, take it and, and what we what we come with what we come up with after that. Like I think all signs are saying that he's that that individual, right? So now we have the we have the power now. Like we have the ability to say, no, I'm not gonna listen to his stuff. I'm not gonna be a supporter. I wanna support the people that he hurt and figure out what can I do to help them. Like what's and what are the steps after that? Like, I think we know that something's wrong there, but what's the steps that we can do as a society, as people to say I can't support this. I gotta figure out a way to help the people that were victims to it and, and move on. Like, what's the move after that, though? Like, what can we do? And it's like you said, it's not just R. Kelly. It's other people out there that are doing this. So this is this is this is, this is our people's issue. Like, we should have had R. Kelly on the Like, we should have addressed that. Like, this shit isn't for the fact that it's been going on so long. It's for the people that have daughters. The fact that it's going on so long means we haven't done our job at all. And there's a lot of people saying like, yo, you listen to his music, the music wasn't that great. And you look at the writing of it. And some people's like, yo, it's, it's okay. Like, it's, and you look at the whole body, it's like, oh, it's okay. It wasn't that great, but I see they had that there, but it's, but some people can't remove how R. Kelly made them feel. At one point. Yeah, at one point. So it's, at some point, we gotta stand for something. Because I, I hear a lot of people, once again, this goes back to everything like people flip flopping and where's, where's, the, where's the consistency. We need consistency across the board. We need to hold the line across the board. This whole, yo, my brother's taking advantage of women and treating women like shit, abusing them like that shit has to stop. Oh, like, man, if we see that shit, we should say something to speak of because that one thing. Not saying something here could cause years of pain for somebody else because what we're supposed to do stay, stay in your lane, stay out of our business. Like at what point do we stand up and we actually become human beings? So like, yo, that shit is wrong. And not be scared for fear of how society might look at us. Because one thing we do know, people will fucking flip flop. You know, I think somebody that's doing a really good job of that, kind of pushing, pushing the, that that narrative along, especially for like black males. And we talk about toxic masculinity a lot, but I think somebody who's doing a really good job of pressing the envelope and, and spreading the awareness is Terry Crews. He's a, he's a guy that's actually you know he's been he's been taking advantage of uh, you know and and, and touched in, in inappropriate ways, and disgusted, and, and has been taken backlash from other people about it. But, but he stays on that he stays on that straight and narrow. He puts his message out there, and I think he does a good job of pushing that pushing that message forward. So I think if we have more guys like him. And, Ourselves stuff yeah. up to do that. It'll be it's funny, you know, I was uncomfortable with people because it's fucking true. Truth makes people really uncomfortable, and that's why I say when we look at any topic, whether it's our killer or anything, why does it make us uncomfortable? Because there's a level of truth to it, and unconsciously, we probably feel we're probably all complicit to something. We're all hypocrites in some type of way. Right? Right. Like, we're all complicit to something in some type of way. I've been in a situation before that was compromising and shit as I look back years ago, like I probably wouldn't. We've all for sure done that. There's there's nobody, everybody's on this holier than thou platform and attitudes if you don't do that wrong. I'm, not, I'm like, oh man, like when we it makes it harder when we when there's a Terry Crews, when we clown on Terry Crews. Like when um what's his name? The comedian the L Hugo goes, oh, with all these muscles, whether he said it in jest or jokingly, what does that mean? He's supposed to punch that man in the face. It's e it's easy. Well, I don't know to do. You don't know what you you don't know what you would or would not do. I commend him for coming forward. Yeah. 
you know, and people make a joke out of people make a meme out of like, what has to do with that? He's been denied jobs from what I read. He's been denied jobs ever since then for speaking out. You know, so it's, it's, it's on both sides, men and women. Right? I think it's maybe probably more so women, more so, more so women but it's when men speak out and you're trying to, it's not, remember I said, is it harder for men to come out? To say about it or women? Yeah. I think I think they both have their own level. It, 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 it is not a comparison. Yeah, it's, it's like we don't think about how hard it might be for a man because we look at as you're not men. We're not happy. You're not men. You're not this. You're not that. Yeah, it's almost it's almost a joke. It's almost like a it's a laugh. Like you said, some comments made it a laughing matter. But yeah, I mean when God when especially a guy like him who has who has the makeup of a of, of, a, of a of a big strong man and and having that stigma, of course yeah. it's going to be like okay. Your, 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 your big butt got, but, you don't think but it he, doesn't matter. You don't, say, you, don't think he, you don't think he feels that? Like, damn, like, my wife's standing here, I got kids, I got this, I got... The fact that he even has to go through that whole... If he was on the street, somebody could, their face would have been broken. Right. But because he has to, he has to stop. The fact that he has to stop, he can't... And it's, he said he did something. It wasn't like he just stood there and just took it. Yeah. You know, but it's... What's, what's the, like I said, if you don't have anything to risk or at stake, it's easy to sit behind your keyboard or your phone yeah. and say what you did. Yeah, but you're not in that situation. And when you know how Hollywood works, if that man do that, he might not work. Right. Again. And you know, I, I hear the, so I guess it was an agent. He was like, well, the agent works for you. You tell them what to do. It's not the other way around. And I'm like, well, you it don't work that yeah, way. Yeah, it, 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 don't, it don't always work that way. So I, I didn't like that. When, when we do, when we have these conversations in public, and when it's black men and black men, we start denigrating each other in public, I have a problem with that. I have a problem if I publicly ridicule you yeah. in public. You have a platform, I have one. That's, because now we have, a, we have a bunch of people. Now they're, they're going to take that, like we talked about before. People taking stories and just running with it. Now this may, not only does he have to deal with that, he has to deal with all the backlash here because people do care about what other people think. No, it's, just, it's just pick it. It's just make it just makes it where now you have to pick a side, and it shouldn't have to be about picking sides. It's about and the, the agenda, the cause. Like nobody deserves to be molested. Nobody deserves to be touched inappropriately. Nobody needs no, nobody from any demographic, age, background, whatever needs to be that way. But then when it's Black males, obviously, and you're a strong black male. You're looked, you're looked upon to be this hyper masculine guy, the guy that's the king of the throne, the guy that can handle anything you can. and handle it the way it's supposed to handle, like a man, right? That's how they would see it and how they would bring it out. But that's not even that's not the issue because if that happened to somebody that wasn't didn't have the makeup or the build as Terry Crews, would it be as as a polarizing topic as it is now. I don't think so. I think it's the, the image, the appearance, and all that stuff that plays a big part of it as well. But then we have two, you know, successful black males going at it about that topic. Obviously, DL's a comic, so he may be making a little bit of light out of it, but that's not, that's, that shouldn't be one of the topics yeah, yeah, yeah. to play around with. And I think that's what it comes down because, to. Because, it's, protecting, it, protecting yeah, because it's a real experience that somebody's actually going through. And the other thing about comedy is that anything that's off, off limits. See, that's right. It, 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 that's that's that line where, because comics' job is to bring things to light and put it out there. Yeah. Yeah. But like, is there a line where you don't cause you don't make a joke out of something? Right. Like, I don't, the whole Twenty One Savage thing. Him, like, people were making fun of like, that's a real situation that he's going through. Everybody's making a joke out of it. Mm -hmm. Some of the things funny, but when you take a step back, it's like, damn, this man is behind bars, going through certain things, and all you see is memes. Yeah. You see more memes than people laughing at, than people supporting him. Right, that for me is an issue. So it's 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 all the infighting. It's all it's all getting our house together and in order. Like we don't need anybody else to come in and tell us what to do or how to handle. But how but how do we do that? And that's my whole thing. Who are the quote unquote leaders? Who are the people leading? Right. It doesn't have to be one or two people. It could be as a collective. But who are those people? Because when you have when you have sellouts. When, you, when, you, when I saw quote unquote celebrities selling out for money or certain things, that becomes tough. Because whether we agree with it or not, 
celebrities' platforms, the thing that they say, they hold weight. When LeBron James says something, it holds weight. Mm -hmm. If you say something, it holds weight. If I say something, it holds weight. But certain people, it holds more. So when, yes, a Justice Smollett comes out and says something, something is staged, that's going to that's going to hurt a lot of people because he inspires mm -hmm. a shitload of people. But that's why I don't put a lot of attention to, I don't, I don't put, I don't invest too much in celebrities. They're not my therapist. They're not, do I take certain things from them? Absolutely. You know, but I don't look to them to tell me how I need to be. I don't look to a music song to tell me how I should be, how I should write, how I should talk. I don't, I don't look at those things, right? But it doesn't mean I can't take bits and pieces. But I think we, I think uh, with all that's been said, to, to tie the whole story back together into where we started with the R. Kelly stuff is, you gotta have strong individuals out there in the world now to to stand up against what's wrong, to stand up against what's what's being seen and given to the world as injustices. I think that's that's the thing we need in this world. We need these people to step up and come to the forefront and be and be leaders and be people that no matter what the popular thing is and what the the, the, the popular narrative is, if it's not the right one or if it's not the move to make us grow as a people and as as a human race to the to the greater good of all mankind. Yeah. I think until we get to that point, we're gonna always have issues of people being quiet and being hushed and people being scared to come out and say things because it's not the popular thing. So I think as a whole, we just need to find that common ground of being okay with being an outcast and okay with being somebody that's perceived as different to give the right knowledge and the right public speaking and the justice and, and things moving forward for a greater cause. And I think that's the story. And I think that will end episode two. It's, uh, it's out there. But, yeah. We're going to see if you guys talking questions, but as far as we go here, peace out. Peace out. See y'all next week.